Welcome to part two of 10 things you need to know about infrared inspection windows. In this section we will be covering the requirements of the actual infrared window lens material itself. So there are a multitude of infrared window materials available to you today depending on the type of task uh, you want to do with your infrared camera. By their very nature they have different mechanical and infrared transmissive properties so you've got to get a lot of thought. Uh, to the material you want to use in your your tip your particular application before you start investing heavily in your your IR windows, um, and again the thing about infrared window the the infrared window transmissive properties are a function of the physics of the material and not really anything to do with the infrared camera itself, uh, but we're going to go into a little bit more detail as we get into the uh, presentation. So when we at the infrared, uh, the sort of the infrared spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, and where infrared lies on that, you can see that we have like cosmic rays, gamma rays, X rays. Then we get into ultraviolet light, um, which we use in electrical maintenance for, for looking for things like corona. Then we have visible light, and you can see the visible light spectrum lies between the UV and then the infrared in, uh, wavelengths. Then we go into microwaves and radio waves. So we're going to now break down the actual infrared spectrum portion if you like so visible is between 0.4 and 0.75 micrometers uh, then we get into the near infrared uh, which is goes from 0.75 to 1 um, short wave goes between 1 and 3 microns uh, the mid wavelength is between 3 and 5 microns not really used used to be used extensively back in the day typical uh, mid wave cameras now would be things like the gas fine cameras and things like that which is very specific for a certain a certain job between five and eight we don't use it i mean the, the atmospheric attenuation or filtering uh, is such that it really isn't suitable for infrared transmission and then the typical uh, infrared cameras 99 percent of them you'll see work in the long wave wave of eight to twelve microns so this is the infrared spectrum and particularly you're going to work within the eight to twelve microns spectrum so again as i said there's a whole list of materials available to you but i'm going to discuss briefly the ones that we see used the most uh, calcium fluoride is probably the most popular uh, infrared crystal lens that we use works between 0.13 and 10 microns um, has quite high reflection uh, nuke hardness quite weak uh, very brittle uh, and is soluble, hygroscopic. The sapphires we used to use when we worked in the mid wavelength. Great material, works between 0 0.15 and 0 0.55. Uh, Nuke hardness of 2000, has an infrared transmission of you know, in the high 90s uh, for the whole of its wavelength, um, in it, whole of the mid wavelength, that is. Uh, infrared polymers uh, between 0 0.15 and 22 microns, uh, not soluble, so that's a big thing. Um, very flexible, good industrial material. Germanium, between 1.8 and, and 23 microns, very reflective, but we do coat, we can coat to get rid of these reflections to increase the transmission. Uh, Nuke hardness, not too bad. It's the type, it's what you'll see most of the infrared camera uh, lenses being made from, N not soluble. Yeah, not water soluble and water, so it's a good industrial grade material. Uh, zinc selenoid, uh, 0.5 to 22. Uh, new part is still quite brittle, but it's something that we use in uh, R&D type applications. We've made quite a few zinc solenoid and germanium windows for our R&D client bases. Barium fluoride, 0.15 to 12.5, better, better transmission than calcium fluoride, but problem with barium fluoride, it's a harmful material. If you look at the chemical classification, it carries a harmful classification, so really not suitable for an industrial grade infrared window. 100 times more hydroscopic and 100 times more fragile than calcium fluoride. So, and so very hygroscopic, not a good industrial material. So these are the ones that you'll see being used primarily uh, out there today. If you look at the operational considerations for your infrared window, this is a very important thing you need to require. So some materials are, are less robust than others. So uh, again, give serious consideration to the operating environment in which you're going to place your window. Because yeah, if you get this wrong, 
it's going to be a very costly exercise. So we're going to discuss a few points here if you like. So one of the things you need to be looking at is, is the window for indoor or outdoor use? Is there an IP rating requirement? So for instance, if it's outdoors, IP65, IP67 type environment, you need to work on that. Is it the materials of the window made of, the actual window body, aluminum, stainless steel, plastics, there's a whole bunch of things you're going to have to think about. Is the eye window system going to be in a noisy environment or an area of high traffic where it can be hit? So again, industrial environments are very noisy. High frequency noise and vibration can affect the transmission rate of crystals because they're very fragile. So, and again, I've seen crystal, crystal windows being broken from someone just hitting, literally hitting the side of the cabinet, um, which happens regularly in industrial applications, and that has broken windows, even find them being broken on delivery. Uh, other things you want to do, is it going to be submitted to severe environmental conditions such as rain, humidity, snow, seawater, acids, alkalis, extreme temperatures. There's a whole bunch of things you need to think about before you start investing heavily in the infrared window systems you're going to use. And one of the things we encourage customers to do is consider if you... If, Try different materials, just take the material, put it outside, leave it there for a few months, see if it degrades over time. Most window manufacturers will give you a sample for you to leave out there, not the window, but the actual material to see if it degrades within the environment in which you need it. So again, keep that in mind as you're going through your development. So we look at the infrared transmission rates, again, um, from my experiences, we, you know, as we said, most of the cameras out there have worked between the eight to, eight to 12 microns, which is a long wavelength. Um, and the average cameras that we work with in the PDM field is around about nine microns. Okay, so what, I, what I've looked at is, is mid-wave we're working at approximately four microns and long-wave we're working at approximately nine microns. So when you're looking at transmission rates of materials, look at those two specific wavelengths because that's going to give you a better idea of what the transmission rate in the material is and where to set your camera. So the most important thing to remember regarding transmission rates, obviously, is that you know what it is. Yeah, so whether it's 99 or 50 or 53 or 51 or 47, it doesn't matter. So long as you know what that percentage transmission loss is, you can even make a, a you can use emissivity to do that. And we're going to discuss this later in this series of how you can set your cameras up to compensate for the infrared transmission losses. And most cameras now, most the latest range of cameras have infrared window offsets or IR transmission offsets that you can put into the camera that will automatically do that but again it's knowing what the transmission rate is and that it doesn't change that's the important thing so looking at the sort of wavelengths we just discussed there's two wavelengths that we utilize in, in today in, in in the infrared industry the mid wavelength which is three to five microns and the long wavelength uh, is, which is 8 to 12 microns and that's really where 99% of the equipment is and probably the camera that you're using would be a long wave infrared camera. So as discussed earlier, you know, we, we, if you look at the PDM wavelength, which I say is between 8.5 and 9.5 microns, we start to look at where the different material transmissions fall into in that wavelength. So if you start to drop in this, here's calcium fluoride, uh, sapphire, uh, magnesium fluoride, not really used, quite fragile, quite hydroscopic, but it, it gets used in other applications. Germanium, as I said, that's the stuff that your lens is made of. Zinc selenoid, barium fluoride, opaque polymers, and clear polymers. There's two types of polymer uh, available. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the three most common materials out there, which is calcium fluoride, opaque polymers, and clear polymers. Okay, and we can see that basically they all, all have approximately the same transmission rate. But unlike the crystals, the polymers are flexible and a much more uh, industrial based material. That's what they were designed for. Um, crystal windows, they, they fail for your solubility, um, they fail for water ingress, and they fail for mechanical failures. So again, we really discourage the use of crystal infrared windows in the industrial applications. They do have applications other than industrial that we utilize them for high temperature work, etc. But for the standard industrial job out there, it really doesn't work. 
If you look at this extract here from a crystal manufacturer, crystal infra winner manufacturer's website, they basically formalize there that their statement says that calcium fluoride, you know, that they think calcium fluoride is the best or the optimum infrared material, although it can be brittle and degrade over time, which again is what you don't want. You don't want something that's brittle and degrades over time. There are mechanical impact requirements for industrial panels. So brittle and degrades over time doesn't work. Degrade over time, I need something that's going to last in the installation of the panel. And that de degradation may cause errors in reading. Well, we're trying to take temperatures readings and we don't want inherent errors coming from the failures of a material. So we really strongly recommend that you do not use crystal windows because again, they're brittle, they're hygroscopic and they will fail. Yeah, that's why none of them are guaranteed. Yeah, you'll get guarantees on the uh, manufacturer's defects, but you won't get material guarantees on crystals because they fail. So again, be very, very, very careful when you're considering using crystals in industrial applications. So it uh, just in the long term doesn't work. This is a, a video from a ball drop test. This is a mandatory test for visual viewing panes with switch gear above 1 kV. So the IEEE say you take a, a two pound ball, you drop it two feet, and, it, and the window mustn't crack, shatter, or dislodge. Well, you can see here that this two pound ball just flies straight through the crystal infrared window, where the polymer infrared window just absorbs it and reflects it back. So it's not an issue. Polymer infrared windows were designed because they look for the mechanical strength requirements for industrial uh, window applications. You can clearly see here that they're taking a five pan sledgehammer and beating the polymer window with no, no problems at all. So it's a very strong, robust, flexible system that works with the infrared camera. Um, to show that, we got an infrared lens comparison. We did a, a, um, an experiment where we took a calcium fluoride lens a opaque polymer lens and a clear polymer uh, lens and we did a, a test. So the test or experiment that we did here was we took, uh, um, we tried to sort of mimic the test parameters that you'll see in the field. So we, we took a, a FLIR E60 320 by 240 camera as the test camera that we use. That could be any 320 by 240 infrared camera. We basically held it 10, 10 inches away from the heat source, trying to give a typical dif distance that you'd see on an electrical connection. Uh, we used a, a target with infrared ID labels that, with a fixed emissivity, so our emissivity on the target was 0.95. We then took uh, that and we made a video of this. So if you look at the video here, in the top left-hand corner, you can see a temperature of 119 degrees. Now that is the uh, temperature uh, of the IRID label, which is at 0.95. I then put a crystal infrared window in front of it, and that dropped to 91 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. That's transmission loss. I then took a opaque polymer window. We put it in front of it again, and if you notice the writing, to see what you've been missing, small format writing, you can clearly still read that writing through the, the lens is okay, the image is okay drop down to about 97 degrees did the same thing with our clear polymer we can still read the writing drop down to about 98 97 98 degrees again very similar difference uh, differences using both polymers so the, the the test was quite or the experiment was quite successful and if you look at the results of that basically um, the base temperature through, without the infrared window was about 119 degrees Fahrenheit we put the VPFI VPFC IR window which is a crystal infrared window in front and the drop down to about 91 degrees which is a 33 percent loss we then tried the vpfr opaque polymer window which has no visual element to it that dropped down to about 97 degrees about 23 percent loss and again then we did the vpt infrared window which is a clear window which gives you the visual and ultraviolet as well as all the uh, infrared spectrums and that dropped to 97.3 or about 22 percent loss so the polymers are, were quite similar but again, the important thing is the crystal will change because it, by virtue of the material, where the polymers are a more industrial grade type material unaffected by acids, alkali, light acids, light as, alkalis and uh, water ingress, high frequency noise and vibration. So what we call fast or fixed and stable transmission applies to the polymers and that's why they have an unconditional lifetime warranty and the crystals, we can't guarantee the crystals because we know they fail, although the bodies, etc., all have an unconditional lifetime warranty. 
So in summary, um, we've discussed different infrared window lens materials will react differently to moisture, humidity, chemicals and the mechanical stresses which they're going to encounter during their lifetime of installation. Uh, thermographers must consider the environmental factors and uh, operating conditions of their infrared windows to ensure that the correct and accurate readings are taken every time. I mean, otherwise, it's like using an out of calibration camera. Fixed and stable transmission, known calibration on the camera, known emissivity of the target equals really good temperature measurement. The infrared window uh, lens materials come in a wide variety of transmission rates. We just discussed a few of them during this presentation. There are a whole bunch more, more specifically to the, the uh, uh, R&D type applications and to the optical applications that you'll see uh, for military and scientific use, etc. And the infrared transmission rates can change with different models and mates of infrared camera. And what you do see is, is basically um, the way that the, the detectors in the cameras uh, detect infrared, you will get slight changes. But once you set it up for that camera, everything should be okay. Thank you for listening to this webinar on infrared windows. Um, if you need any more information on uh, infrared windows or any of the uh, IRIS-EMSD product lines, please visit www.iris.com.